What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all, listen, I'm always going to preface my videos by saying this. Don't be up here trying to talk crazy because I got this Christmas tree still up. Unless one of y'all going to come to my house and help me take it down, I ain't trying to hear none of that, y'all, because I'm sorry. It took a while to put it up. Not, it ain't take that long, but, you know, I'm just being lazy. I don't feel like taking it down right now, right? But nonetheless, man, it's January 15th, and it's still up. It might be up to March. I don't care. But anyway, I also want to send a uh, happy Founders Day to the women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, coming from a, a fellow noob myself. But let's get to the topic at hand. So, the Hall of Famer Ed Reed, the greatest safety to ever play the game, uh, one of the greatest DBs ever. He went on, he went live on social media discussing his disappointment with Bethune Cookman University, or that well, he's, he was discussing his um his disappointment with the administration at. But Thune Cookman University, so on and so forth, and all this and all of that, right? For those who don't know, Ed Reed was recently hired as the head coach of Bethune Cookman University. It's a university, a, a, excuse me, a historically black university, HBCU, located in Daytona Beach, Florida, right? So when the news first came about, I was excited. I'm always excited to see prominent black athletes coming back and giving back to the HBCUs for sure. Because we need these individuals to be the face and ambassadors for the school. It's not we. It's it's good for our schools. It's good for the HBCUs to have these uh, men as the ambassadors for the school because it does a lot for the exposure, for resources, so on and so forth, right? So anyway, Ed Reed gets on social media and he starts ranting and he starts talking about how Prime One Lion, some of Prime Deion Sanders, Prime One Lion. He's talking about anybody in their feelings are getting mad. I'm paraphrasing right there, but like. People can get mad all they want to or whatever, but Prime wasn't lying. And he says things like, I just pulled up to work. We're going to try to help y'all too, man, because I know a lot of HBCUs need help. I'm just here. I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help here first. I see it all too clearly. All our HBCUs need help. All of our HBCUs need help. And they need help because the people who's running it, broken mentalities out here. I'm going to leave you with that. I got to get in the office, right? And then, you know, he starts to talk about how he's been there for like a week and he's done more for people who've been there. He's done more than people who've been there for years and all this and all of that. And he's been there a week and all this and all of that. And, you know, I'm really conflicted on this type of stuff because on one hand, you know, I know that some HBCUs have struggles in areas. Uh, you have some people who are in administration who don't do what they're supposed to do. But that is at a lot of different schools, even predominantly white institutions. But for whatever reason, I know what the reason is. It always gets highlighted at HBCUs for sure. Corruption happens at a lot of universities, but they always get highlighted at HBCUs. But one thing to me, man, it appears that Coach Ed Reed is picking up where Coach Prime left off in his comments about HBCUs. And honestly, I'm already annoyed. And some people may say, I'm only annoyed because I went to an HBCU. I went to Mississippi Valley State University, uh, a SWAC school, right? My school is the youngest institution in the SWAC. My school was founded in 1950. My father is five years younger than the institution that I graduated from. So we don't have the same resources as a lot of the other SWAC schools. We don't have the same alumni base, heavy alumni base as the other SWAC schools. We're a small institution, a small school. And so... I understand like the, the 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 plight of the HBCU programs, how we're severely underfunded. We don't get a lot of the state funding and all that type of stuff that other the other predominantly white schools get at all. It's not even close. We don't have these we don't have these billion dollar endowments. None of that, none of that is around for us, right? So when people start talking down about HBCUs, it hits me because it hits close to home. Not only because I went there, my father went there. My aunt went there. My grandmother went, not to Mississippi Valley, but they went to Alcorn. They went to HBCUs themselves. My other grandfather went to uh, St. Augs in North Carolina, in Raleigh, North Carolina, right? So I am uh, a product of HBCUs all the way around. So I feel some type of way when I hear these type of things being said, because it, to me, it appears as clear as day. We've seen this playbook already. Villainize the HBCU, vi villainize the HBCU you coach in order to draw attention to yourself and make yourself seem like a hero or a savior. When your team wins or gains some type of, when they gain success, you'll seem like the savior. You'll feel like the, the, the have the savior complex, right? You villainize the HBCU when you first get there, talk about how they ain't got this, they ain't got that, and how they this and they, how they so incompetent, how they this and they that. So when you, if you get some wins, it'll look like you just came and did the Coach Carter effect all across the board, right? 
it seems like it's more lucrative to trash HBCUs than to uphold them, right? And everybody is riding that money train, and I, and I don't like it, man. Again, it's maybe people feel like I'm only saying it because I'm an HBCU alum, but it's clear what the formula is. Villainize the HBCU and make it seem like you just came and just look how you just helped the lowly HBCU from the from the dungeons of whatever, and you just helped the lowly school, and now you are the savior, now you are the Moses, the Jesus of all this, all of everything that went down, right? Because, hey, listen, I say that because Ed Reed has been at an HBCU for like one week, a week and a half, and he's talking about how he done more for, he's done more there already than people that's been there for years. Well, if you say that, Ed, let us know what you've done. Tell us what you've done. Right. So we can measure that ourselves. Let us know, because you can't make a statement like that without stating specifically what you've done, because that's a really, really big. That's a bold statement. I didn't done more in a week. You didn't done. You didn't done more for people that you didn't done more than people that's been there for years. Well, if that's the case, brother, let us know what you've done. Present that to us so we can assess that ourselves. Right. Because now I just seem like you're just trying to, it's, it sounds like you're trying to be the savior. You're trying to create the savior complex. I didn't been here and I didn't did more than, than people that have been here for years. Well, Ed, you got to show us something, brother. If you're going to make a statement like that, you have to come present us with the evidence, present us with what, you, what you've done so we can measure it. Give us some measurables. Because come on now, like, uh, uh, I don't like the, the optics of, of him getting on social media, live on social media, saying stuff like that. You done more than people that have been there for years. In a week? Okay, brother. Well, tell us. Now you gotta tell us, right? You know, and, and also we all know a lot of HBCUs need help. We're severely underfunded. We lack a lot of resources, right? But Ed, you're there to help make necessary changes. But the blasting of the HBCUs could potentially turn financial support away since you blasting them. It could turn all the financial support away. They would say, why the hell you want to help that school? Look at what they're doing. Oh, look at what look at the problems they're giving Ed Reed. Why the hell we want to go there, right? And this is what kills me, man. These men, when I say these men, Ed Reed and Coach Prime, they get they a lot of them. Again, Coach Prime did some did a lot of good at, at uh, Jackson State for sure. But I didn't like certain things that certain narratives that was painted around when he was leaving. But it's certain men that come in every they take every opportunity to badmouth and belittle HBCUs. Every opportunity, every opportunity. And people will take their word their word for it every single time because we deal with celebrity worship in regular society and strongly within the black community. If a celebrity says something, oh, you damn sure we gonna believe it as a community. Cause why would the celebrity be lying? He's a celebrity. Why would he lie? Celebrities lie all the motherfucking time, right? All the time. We've seen it before. Celebrities lie all like a motherfucker, right? Excuse my excuse me for cursing, but I you know I feel I'm very passionate about this, so. You know, sometimes vulgarities comes out when, again, on, on my YouTube channel at least. I can hold myself in a professional manner when, when necessary. But, you know, this is my YouTube channel, so whatever, right? But, yeah, like, they take every turn, seize every, oppor seize every opportunity to bad mouth and throw HBCUs under the bus. But if these brothers was at these predominantly white institutions, they hush, hush. They keep everything in the house. They don't say a goddamn thing about what's going on at the predominantly white schools. They don't say nothing. They keep their mouth shut. They don't say nothing. They don't belittle the HBCU because I know he was at U of UM. UM got a lot of bad shit going on at the University of Miami now. <clears throat> a ton of corrupt shit was going on there. And it's been documented on documentaries, right? Hey, Mars ain't never come around saying no type of bad stuff about University of Miami, none of that. But the, the moment you was at the HBCU for one week, you coming about coming coming out painting a, a, a broad brush, and generalizing all HBCUs, you know, these are just the people that run it that's messing it up and all, all these people that run it. Well, brother, that's if you're having a specific issue at Bethune-Cookman, that's one thing. But don't paint a broad brush on all HBCUs, right? But again, if these brothers was at the predominantly white institutions, you would never hear none of that. None of this stuff would come out if, there was, if they was at PWIs. Y'all know I ain't lying. If I'm lying and I'm flying, and as you can see, my feet are firmly cemented to the ground. So I'm telling the truth, right? <laughs> that's how it works. But anyway, man, like... It just, it just it kills me, man. Um, Ed ain't coached a quarter of football at BCU. He ain't coached a quarter of football at Bethune Cookman. Ain't won a game yet. But all, but he's willing. All he's willing to do is is bring extreme criticism right now, right? He's willing to bring the extreme criticism. He ain't coached a down of football yet. Ain't coached a, a quarter. It's crazy. But and I'm looking. Like
feeling like, well, damn, if you really ready to do that, if you really, to, if you're willing to see, uh, take the opportunity to trash the HBCU the first chance you get, go and coach at the predominantly white institutions then, right? And I know y'all gonna say it's kind of productive because we wanted him there. We do, we do. We really want Ed there, for sure. We want individuals like Ed there. But you gotta watch how you handle the HBCUs. Handle us with care and love the same way you would handle us if we was the University of Miami, right? Because let me tell you something. These brothers... These brothers that went to these uh, Power 5 schools, they love their alma mater with their heart and soul in Jesus Christ. They won't talk about none of the money they gave them. They will keep that, they keep their mouth shut on that, right? We'll never trash that, that uh, predominantly white school. Oh, God, I love my alma mater. alma mater so good to me, so good to me, so good to me, right? And again, I'm a man that went to an HBCU for my undergraduate degree and then got my master's from a, a predominantly white institution, right? So I, I've had experiences at both of them, been around student athletes in both both sides of the field, right? But I don't know, man. It's like, that, like, they get to, it's looking like a trend now. Prime started it. Get to the HBCU, trash the HBCUs. You don't hear them say a peep about their school. Handle HBCUs with the same care that you would handle your predominantly white institution. And some of these brothers don't get that and, and, how, when you don't handle us in the same way you would handle your alma mater, the, the Power 5 school you went to, how it could damage our reputations as a whole because they come to HBCUs and paint us with a broad brush and trash all the HBCUs all in general if they have one bad experience in certain areas and certain pockets or whatever, right? They don't understand the harm that it does to this movement that we're trying to make. We're trying to perpetuate, we're trying to push these HBCUs forward. We're trying to push our kids to these schools and like, you know, they're just willing, like, or, or, and we're trying to have more fanfare, more coverage of these HBC, HBCU athletic games, or these games. We want more coverage at the basketball games, uh, at the football games, so on and so forth. But y'all know these institutions or these um, companies that are run by, you know, white white American people, they ain't going to come to our, they don't want to come to our schools already. But if Ed Reed talking about he having this problem, they go, oh, man, we ain't going there. They treating the great Ed Reed bad. We ain't going over there. But... Brothers be getting treated terrible at these predominantly white institutions and brothers don't say a peep about shit. Jalen Rose, the only brother I knew stood like a goon talking about University of Michigan. Talking about University of Michigan, how they did them bad. Jalen Rose, the only one I knew. It's, there's been other brothers too, but that's the only one I can think of at the top of my head. Trashing the predominantly white school he went to. Or, or getting down, not even trashed them, getting down on the floor. Like, hold on, man. Look at what y'all, we was good enough to win them games, but now we ain't good enough to come back and, and, and be at the games now because... Oh, they were taking money? Like, for real? But again, a lot of them brothers don't understand why we should be handled with care because they went to predominantly white institutions and power five schools. And when I say that, I watch, um, what's my man name? I watch, uh, what's Takeo Spikes has a podcast with the dude, uh, Tuton Reyes, right? Him and Sue was talking about, um, um, basically how when, the, when they were criticizing people for talking about Coach Prime, that people was trying to make it seem like they wasn't black no more because they didn't go to HBCUs. Brother, there ain't nobody saying y'all not black. Ain't nobody saying y'all not from the hood. But when y'all leave the hood and go to them Power 5 schools, your experience is completely different from the from an athlete that goes to an HBCU. You don't understand the nuances of these conversations about the financial disparities between HBCUs and, uh, and predominantly white institutions and Power 5 schools. You, you don't understand it because you are good enough to go to the Predominantly white institution, your power five school where y'all weren't lacking for shit. Y'all ate in separate, separate cafeterias than regular students. HBCUs, they eating with us. The athletes eating with us, they eating the same shit we eating. They ain't got no dietary plan and they don't eat no certain, they don't even got the money for that. And again, they don't understand these certain conversations because they never been through it. When I was at Mississippi Valley State University, right, Pat Forty, uh, I was there, Coach Sean Woods at uh, Mississippi Valley State University, uh, my school. Sean Wood, he went on to go coach at Moorhead State. He played for, pre he previously played under Rick Pitino at Kentucky. Sean Woods was the coach when I was there. We went to go, we made the, H, uh, the NCAA tournament. We won 17 uh, non-conference games in a row. We almost went undefeated in non-conference. We lost the last game, I think, against University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. We almost went 18 and 0 in conference play. We were winning so much in the sport. Pat Forty comes down to interviews. Um, Coach Woods. Coach Woods said this 2011-2012 season, right? Coach Woods discloses that, like, basically, uh, well, he says, he, well, Pat Forty finds out, Mississippi Valley State University's athletic budget was $5 million across all sports. 
To, to put this in perspective, the school that Coach Woods came from, Kentucky, spent $5 million alone on a basketball team, right? Look at that disparity. When NBSU was, had one of the hardest non-conference schedules in basketball in the country, and when we did that, we, we generated the, the school, not we, but the, the players generated a million dollars, nearly a million dollars, almost nine hundred something thousand dollars for the school by playing that brutal non-conference schedule. And the school and the, the, the team needed to play that schedule to get the money in for the school, right? So, yeah, man. So a lot of these guys that went to these Power 5 schools and went to go play in the in the, uh, the big the Big Ten, the SEC, ACC, they don't understand these discrepancies, so they're they not handling it with care because they don't really don't give a fuck because they didn't go to these schools. So they don't see nothing wrong with trashing these schools and talking crazy and talking down on them and belittling them. Cause they ain't got these. These ain't they on my mater. But I bet you they handle that good old old Miss. They handle University of Miami. They handle Alabama. Ooh, they handle uh, Ohio State. They they handle Florida and Florida State with so much care and so much passion and so much compassion and so much. Oh, they handle it with so much care. That's the shit they get on my nerves, right? But again, man, if you're gonna try to take, if if, the, if you're in one week of coaching at the school, all you wanted to do is bring extreme criticism. Go ahead and coach at the predominantly white institutions if that's the case. Oh, oops, I forgot. The PWIs won't hire y'all because y'all don't got no coaching experience. Y'all don't have no, no prior coaching experience at the collegiate level. So they're not going to hire y'all on the first rip. So you got to come to the HBCUs, what people call the lowest rung of Division I athletics, right, of Division I football. You got to come to the lowly HBCUs to get your opportunity and get your chance because the HBCUs are the only teams only are the only schools willing to give you that opportunity to head coach. See how that work, man? To me, man, I, I look at this and I'll be like, save these sanctimonious speeches for another day, right? Save all these sanctimonious, all these sanctimonious speeches, uh, excuse me, speeches for another day. I'm stuttering because I'm so passionate. Save all those speeches for another day because the PWIs have pimped more black brothers than the HBCUs could ever, ever could do. The predominantly white institutions have pimped more brothers than the HBCUs ever could. You know I ain't lying. So all them sanctimonious speeches, I ain't trying to hear it, right? And then, like I said, don't generalize HBCUs. He used a, generaliz he used a generalization to document his own experience at Bethune-Cookman. Ed Reed, again, doesn't have much no he doesn't have much knowledge about HBCUs in the first place, but tries to paint all HBCUs with a wide brush. I don't like that. Oh, you know, we all got these these people running is a problem at these HBCUs. No, if you feel like that at a Bethune Cookman in there, okay, whatever. But don't, uh, nah, don't do that, right? And again, look, I res I, Ed Reed was one of my, I love the Baltimore Ravens defense. I love watching the Ravens defense play. I love, you couldn't find a bigger uh, Ray Lewis fan than me. And I didn't criticize Ray for them Black, uh, them Black Lives Matter speeches he was giving, sounding like, trying to sound like Martin Luther King and his cadences and all of that. And had all these white folks kneeling and kissing his feet. Oh, he write this black on black, this black on black crime. That's what's wrong with these N words. The black on black crime is not systemic racism, not police brutality, killing unarmed black folks. It's the black on black crime. If the black people stop killing each other, then these other races that have more respect for us. Bullshit. He Ray, that's some bullshit, Ray. But again, a lot of these, a lot of football players, they don't know how to handle certain conversations involving our schools and our institutions with care. Even though these schools have uh, educated some of their mamas, their grandfathers, their grandmothers, their cousins, their aunties and uncles, so on and so forth, they don't handle us with care because, again, it's not. It's, oh, I'm going to make this point too. Football is the most popular sport in America. White folks love football with their mind, heart, heart, body, and soul. And so, if you if you look at it, a lot of football players receive a lot of, they get coddled in, in a certain way, even more than basketball players do. Because white folks love football. So they, when they play football, a lot of them start to get pulled away from the community in certain senses because a lot of white American people hug them and, and kiss them and tell them how great they are because they you're doing so great for their team. And they're invested in football heavily. White American people love football way more than they love basketball. So a lot of the Collegiate athletes and football players and professional football players get their feet kissed and ass kissed a lot, even though they get done dirty uh, financially 
in college and in the pros, but they have a certain mindset that the switch is off because they've been coddled and and beloved by these um by these by these predominantly white institutions and these people that come from these schools. I will give Ed this credit this because I don't think Ed is a quote unquote coon. I don't see that in, in Ed at all uh, because I remember when. You know, he was inducted to, inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think the brother had like a tie on, or was that him? Hold on, I, I hope I get this right. Was that was that Randy Moss or Ed? It was talking about the police brutality amongst black folks that have been killed or something. Y'all let me know, right? But nonetheless, even if I don't view him as that, this is very irresponsible to be acting, like trying to villainize the HBCUs. So you trying to get the savior complex thrown on you, just like your mentor prime. And I don't respect it, right? I respect Ed as a Hall of Famer. But a Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame football player, and a Hall of Fame coach are not mutually exclusive. We have to see what the brother going to do coaching, and he ain't coached one quarter of football. One quarter, one down of football, and he already really, really, he's ready to throw criticism all, all, all out there, right? This is the thing, man. Ed was interviewing at every HBCU trying to get a job, only to complain about it once he got the job. Now, I'm going to ask y'all this. What job in corporate America do you know that you can disrespect and disparage the company and then still have a job the next week? Y'all let me know. What, what place in corporate America can you do that? The answer is none. I'll answer it for you. No place in corporate America can you do that, right? And then Ed comes out and says that he doesn't have a contract after being there for a week. He don't, got, he don't even got no contract. Well, that's a layered conversation, brother. First of all, why would you agree to a new job without a contract? That's first, right? If you don't have a contract, then that's your fault. Work out those details before you start working. That's the thing. Work out them details before you start working. Secondly, without having the money to secure Prime, you know, to secure Prime, Colorado secured, they still secured Dion. And he went to go do work for Colorado while he was still employed at Jackson State. Without even having all the money that they said in the contract they offered him, they still secured Prime. And Prime ain't get there talking about how he, how he still ain't got his money together. They ain't got the money, all the money they said they got. And now he ain't do that. You know, and granted, it could be because he knows that they have the endowment, a billion dollar endowment in Colorado, a billion dollar endowment in Colorado to pay him. Them boosters going to do all, them, all they can to keep Prime there. Them, them rich white boosters they're gonna do all they can to get all that money in there to keep to keep prime there you know and i know y'all gonna be like why is it about race it's, race is a instrumental co part of this component of this conversation right it's, it's, it allows us to talk about um why the, the predominantly white institutions have this mega million they can give all these mega million dollars back and the predominantly uh, uh the hbcus cannot um and another thing too it kills me when these black these black entertainers donate to these. Like, I saw Dr. Dre donate, what, $50 million to USC school. Like, USC uh, music program. And I sit in there and ask, like, what the fuck USC need with $50 million? Not a damn thing. He could have gave it to an HBCU. I know HBCUs ain't out west. He could have found an HBCU to give it to on the east coast, down south, midwest region. Could have found an HBCU to get that money to. They they or split it up across several HBCUs. They could definitely use that. USC don't they don't they don't need a dime from him, right? But my problem is that man, like he talking about he ain't got no contract. He ain't even got no contract. Prime, they ain't even had the money at Colorado to pay Prime yet. And he got there, Prime ain't say a word. Now let Prime not had all his money at HBCU. He been acting a damn fool. Talking about how they ain't even got all this stuff together there yet. And my point of bringing that story up is that brothers will go to a predominantly white situation, won't complain about a damn thing. We'll be shut mouth, smiling, and kiss, shaking hands and kissing babies. The moment the water too cold at the HBCU, they get into the media, go into just a big old public setting to talk about how the water ain't even hot enough at the school. Ain't that some shit? Brothers will whisper about criticisms at a and whisper criticisms at a predominantly white institution. But at HBCU, oh, let them not have a good coffee machine there. Brothers gonna start getting loud about it and belligerent about it. And shaming the HBCU, because how dare you don't have a good ass coffee machine for me to make this good ass coffee in the morning. It it it, it boggles my mind and it grinds my gears. Brothers always want to seem like brothers think white ice is colder. 
And then they always want to seem like the, the black institutions is so terrible. It's like when a brother has bad service with, a, um, like he goes through a bad experience with a black owned, a black owned business. And he goes on Facebook talking about how he never supporting black owned businesses no more. They don't never have a shit together. They don't never do this and never don't do this. They don't do that right. They don't do this right. They let them have a bad experience with one of these white run businesses. They'll chalk it up to the game. They'll be mad about it. You don't see no status about it. You rarely see a status about it. They go on about their day. But when if it's a if it's a bad if they have a bad experience at a black business at a black business all the all the black businesses ain't shit. They ain't never giving no money to it. They ain't worth a damn. None of that. Like it's just it, it, this is the same type of sentiment I'm getting from hearing Ed Reed do all of this. But hell, what do I know? I'm just a kid that went to a, a historically black college and university. Mississippi Valley State University, a swag school. I just went there and just, I was just a student. I wasn't an athlete. And then I also went on to go to predominantly white institution at a grad school. So what the hell does my opinion matter? I don't know. What do I know? Hmm. It is what it is. Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm out. Peace.